Stop neglecting your thumbnails. I can't tell you guys how many times I've watched smaller gaming channels videos and I'm left saying, wow, how does this video not have more views? Well, depending on the type of content, not having a proper thumbnail and title combination can fail to attract viewers to what might be a good video. That's why in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how you can make high quality thumbnails for your gaming videos 100% for free using Photopea. All right, so to get this started, the first thing we're gonna do is head over to photop.com. And sure, we can start creating a thumbnail right within the web app version without having to install anything. But if you guys can, I recommend going to the more tab and installing Photop directly to your computer as the user experience will be a bit better. Now, for those of you guys out there that are completely new to Photop, this is a free photo editing app that is essentially a copy of Photoshop in as many ways as humanly possible possible there are no gimmicks there are no catches let's go ahead now and create a new project and what you guys are going to see here is a bunch of pre-established templates that photo p has already put together you're even going to see one here for a youtube thumbnail but i'm going to customize this a little bit with the width and the height instead of a 720p thumbnail we're going to do a 1920 by 1080 thumbnail. So that way our thumbnail is gonna be a little bit bigger in pixel size and be higher quality. Once we do that, go ahead and select create and you're gonna be presented with your canvas. The next thing you guys need to do is brainstorm the type of thumbnail you want to create here. You guys can definitely get some inspiration by going onto YouTube and looking up some of the creators within the gaming niche that you're in and seeing how their thumbnails are constructed. You have an image in your mind now for what your thumbnail is gonna look like? Great. Now you need to gather all of the elements that make up that thumbnail. Let's start off with the background. Since I'm gonna be making a Fortnite related thumbnail, I'm gonna get some images out of the game itself. So while I'm playing, I'm gonna get some screenshots and even in theater mode, which is such a nice touch, I'm happy Fortnite has this. Unlike other games out there, this is a fantastic feature to leverage if your game supports it. I also know for games like Minecraft, you can get the replay mod to be able to get screenshots or images of your character out in the Minecraft universe. I can also use OBS Studio to take those screenshots if I want through my capture card. I just need to assign a keybind to the screenshot command. If you guys are struggling to get nice quality screenshots or freeze frames from your game, then you can always go onto the internet on Google, type in your game, even go to the game's website and see if there's any new or recent images that you can repurpose into a thumbnail. So here's a few background shots that I liked. I'm gonna go with this one first and all I need to do is grab Grab it and I can throw it right into photo P. I can also rearrange the scaling of it just by grabbing one of the corners and then moving it in and out until I have the preferred size that I want. Select enter. If I need to get back into the scaling mode, I can just do command or control T and that will put me right back in there. But I can also find it by going to edit, transform and then scale. The next thing we're gonna need to do is add our primary image to this thumbnail. Now, depending on the background shot that you guys might have taken, you may already have that image within here, but there's a little bit more that you can do with that singular image to separate it from the background. For my primary image, I'm gonna go with this picture I took here, and yes, I said picture. If you're gonna put your face on a thumbnail, be intentional about the picture that you're going to use. So actually set up a timer camera on your camera to take a picture of yourself instead of just grabbing a random freeze frame while you're editing. You're gonna get a much nicer quality image doing it this way versus the other way. So strike some poses. Stop, 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 no, 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 we're, we're good, we're good, moving on. Once you have the image you like, go ahead and take that, drag it onto your photo P project. If you don't see it, that means it's behind another layer, which is the case for me. So I'm just gonna go to this area here where you have my layers. I'm gonna grab this layer and I'm just gonna drag it on up to the top so that I can see it. The next thing I'm gonna need to do here is cut out my upper torso area so that the background that you see currently where I'm in my room here is removed. We don't wanna see that. So what we can do is get over here to the lasso tool and we can actually right click that and do the magnetic lasso select. So this will be a little bit easier to shape around here, but go around your entire body here and get the cleanest cutout 
that you can. This is definitely the most tedious part of the process, but if you want to make it easier on yourself, then you can check out today's sponsor, Fodor. They offer an online photo editing app where you can upload the picture of yourself, and then by selecting the background removal tool, you can create a clean cutout of your body. And what makes this even better is that you just don't have to use this for your upper body or face pics. It can be used with other objects from games or images that you might have found online. On top of that, if your face just isn't looking quite right, kind of like mine sometimes, you can use Fodor to help improve it by using the AI skin retouching option. Now, there's plenty more cool things that Fodor can do on top of all that, like removing objects from images with the magic eraser. You can create collages, generate AI images and videos. There's a lot. So if you want to check it out, use my link in the description below and get started for free today. There we go. Have a decent cutout now. We're going to copy this and then paste using control V. And now when I take away that original layer of my face, you can see we have a decent cut out here. Obviously, as you can see, it's definitely not perfect. So you'll want to take the eraser tool, right click on there, make sure it's not too hard, but give it a little bit of hardness, maybe like 40% size is good. And we're just going to want to kind of smooth out these edges a little bit. So it looks a little bit cleaner. Okay. We got this cut out looking pretty decent for free. Let's not forget to save our project, by the way. All right. Next thing we can do is place this where we want in our thumbnail. I'm going to go on the right side here and we're going to blow this up a little bit more like that. And you know, one thing I'm thinking here, I kind of would rather have my face go the opposite way. So while I'm in the scaling mode, right click what is up with photo P that I mean, it's free. It's going to have these little bugs, but I'm going to flip this horizontally. See, I kind of like how I'm leaning into the image here a little bit more. And I'm actually going to rotate this a little bit by just going on to the outside. All I need to do is just press down and just twist a little bit. And that rotation option will appear. Press enter and we're done. No, we're, we're not done. We're going to keep going the extra mile here. Now, I will say for Fortnite specifically, if you are not comfortable putting your face in the thumbnail, it is not always necessary or required. Of course, you guys can easily leverage all of the free renders that are out there sitting in Google drives, some that are actually being updated on a somewhat regular basis. I left links in the description below, but you guys can go ahead, download these directly to your computer. They are PNG files, which means the background is already transparent so you don't need to separate the character from the background so check this out I downloaded this Fortnite character here I'm gonna drag this right into my photo P project let's bring it up to the top layer and I'm gonna hide my face so that we don't see that anymore who wants to see that anyway and now check it out we can use this guy right here for our thumbnail okay back to the thumbnail that I was working on at hand. The next thing we can add to this thumbnail is some text or a logo of the game. All we need to do is go to the text icon here. That's going to load in the text effect. And all we need to do is select where we want to start typing, type in what you want to say. We're actually going to change the font here. I don't like this particular font. We're going to go with my favorite Poppins, but there's plenty of other really good ones out there. Like the one that a lot of people use for Fortnite videos is Burbank Big Condensed. Some other good ones out there are Bebe's New, Champion Heavyweight, and Oswald. For this Poppins text, we're going to make it the black version. And then we're going to increase the size here to its maximum. So it's a little bit easier to see. And then I'm not crazy about black text. So we're actually going to make this white instead. Yeah, let's put that right there for now. And while I'm at it, just in case we want to use it for a second thumbnail option, I'm going to look up the Fortnite logo PNG. Let's go to images and which one are we liking here? I'm liking this one here, but it is not transparent. As you can see, we're not getting the grid lines in the background there. That's the no go. How about this one? This one is a winner. So we're just going to go ahead and copy the image right from Google. Go back to our photo P project, paste that on in. And as you can see, we have our Fortnite logo in here. If we wanted to use that as well. If I wanted to change this to white, just go over to the layer, double click on that layer. Then you're just going to want to go to color overlay, make sure it's checked off and then go into the setting itself. And then right here, you can go to where this black is currently and set this thing to white instead. 
Once you do that, select OK and then OK one more time and you'll see that it is in the way that you want. We're going to hide that layer for now. The next thing we can do is add some supporting elements or objects such as red arrows or weapons. Adding these sort of things in can compensate if you don't include a logo of the game on the thumbnail. When you have elements of the game on the thumbnail, viewers that know and understand the game already can recognize those elements and be more likely to click on your content. One fantastic source that Fortnite actually has is this Fortnite.gg Beyond Assets. It's a full complete catalog of stuff that you can download directly to your computer. Let's just take the most recent season, for example, you can go over and download an image of the weapon to include in your thumbnail just by clicking on it simply. Don't forget, you guys have the entire internet to look up PNG or transparent images as well. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this arrow here. It is transparent as I can see from the grid lines. We're gonna go back into my photo P project. We're gonna paste that on in. And now we're just gonna go back into the scaling mode doing Command or Control T, rotate this a little bit. Let's shrink it down, make it a little smaller. And there you go. Just adding the arrow into that spot of the thumbnail like that adds a little bit more wonder and mystique. And it can result in the viewer clicking because they're a bit more intrigued. Now at this point, the thumbnail's looking pretty decent, but there are some effects we can add to make this thing pop a lot more than it is right now. First thing I want to modify, and this has been driving me crazy since I've started making this thumbnail is removing this information that's at the top of this background image. I'm gonna first hide the easy mode text. I'm then gonna zoom in here. And now in Photo P, we can select the spot healing brush. Let's right click on that and make the size a little bit bigger. I think 59, 60, perfectly fine. Make sure we're on the background layer, rasterize it. And now let's just highlight this part that we don't want to include even the seagull you can go to bro and voila it's pretty much gone for these areas that need a little bit of a touch up i'm just going to go to the brush tool here let's right click let's make this brush tool just a little bit bigger not too much bigger the hardness i'm going to want this to basically be zero because i don't want it to look weird and then for the color palette our primary one is the one that's on that top left side here Right now it's black, but just by selecting that, we're gonna just go over, move our cursor over here to the right to get the color that is in the sky. We're gonna select okay, and we're just gonna try to go over the go over the tops here. We can add our text back in now. The next thing I'm gonna wanna do here, still staying on the background image, is go to the image tab, and then we're gonna drop down to where it says adjustments, and we're gonna change the brightness and contrast here a bit. You know, it's not looking too bad, but we can make this look a little bit better, all right? So we're gonna, we're gonna brighten a little bit of this up, add some contrast as well. See, it's already starting to pop a little bit. One more thing I wanna do on this background image is go back into the image section, go to hue and saturation, and I'm just gonna increase the saturation just a wee little bit so that it looks a little more colorful. And you know what, while we're at it, let's go to filter, and we can sharpen this just a little bit. Let's just add one thing of sharpen to it. That looks pretty nice. Of course, you guys can go to filter and add a blur effect as well in case you guys are doing different types of thumbnails. So I know for like Call of Duty thumbnails, for example, you might wanna add a radial blur instead like this, and you can adjust the amount of radial blur that there is, and then you'll have your gun sitting on top of this radial blur essentially. You guys can also play with the Gaijin blur, which is basically more of a normal, subtle blur to add to your thumbnail. Now moving on back to my face cam image, I'm gonna to wanna to follow a similar process by adjusting the brightness and contrast. Try to enhance it, but don't make it look abnormal <laughs> is the key. I think that looks pretty decent. We're gonna go back to image and then, you know, similar thing, but we're gonna to go to vibrance and then I'm going to increase the vibrancy of this image and also the saturation. And depending on your skin tone, you don't wanna to look too yellowy, greenish or overly red. So you may need to go to the image tab go to adjustments and then go to hue and saturation. And this is one area where you can play with the colors a little bit. See, I can make myself a little more red or a little more greenish yellow. Oh gosh, it looks really freaky. If you guys want more pinpoint control, go back to image adjustments and then you're gonna see an option for color balance. 
and this is where you can specifically modify those reds, greens, and blues to make it look exactly how you want. Now, one thing I think it's very imperative to fix here is making sure that there's separation between me and the background. So I think we have that going on a little bit, but it's still meshing because the background is in focus as well as myself, my face here being in focus too. So I'm gonna go back to the background image here and then we're gonna go to the blur tool, the thing that looks like a teardrop icon, select that and then we're just gonna do a right click. We're gonna make this thing Pretty big hardness, let's do like 75, that's pretty good. And I'm just gonna start going over this, blurring that area behind me out so that it doesn't look so, you know, flat looking, gives it a little more depth. Not too shabby, I'm gonna go back into the normal select mode. Let's save, don't forget to continue to save throughout your project. And let's go back to my face cam layer here. I'm gonna double click this and we're gonna go to drop shadow. So this is gonna add a little bit more depth to the image as you can see already, but we're gonna need to play around with this just a smidge to make it look kinda better. Yeah, I like that angle there. Let's play with the size of this drop shadow. So as you can see, the, the background is getting a little bit darker behind me. You know, I can mess with the spread to make it even more pronounced and even the opacity here to make it more dark. We're gonna keep it a little bit on the lighter side and select okay to apply those changes. Now we can jump to the text or the logos or even the objects I'd say apply to this as well. Similar thing like we just did for the face cam or the face image is we're gonna double click on that text. We're gonna go to drop shadow. And since I've already applied the drop shadow effect to a different layer, now that I'm applying it to another layer, it's gonna take those same settings and apply it to this layer. But if we don't wanna stick with these settings, of course we can modify them a little bit. Some people also add a stroke, which is a great option to make it even more pronounced. So if you add that, you're gonna see how much more bold looking your text can look. That looks pretty good. Let's do some small tweaks on this red arrow. And wow, guys, <laughs> this thumbnail really came together. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> the colors are popping. My face has some emotion. We see an arrow pointing to something that might intrigue the audience. Like like this, this is good. Now I know a lot of you guys are getting the A, B and C thumbnail testing feature. So with the work that we've already put in here, we can apply the same techniques to make a B thumbnail real quick. Let's do 1920 by 1080 again. I'm gonna move over some of these same layers. So my face, I'm gonna copy the Fortnite text, render, and a different background. Let's make sure we move this layer to the bottom. I didn't have to do too much and it's already looking pretty sick. I need a new Fortnite logo. Ah, this one, 1581 by 441. This is a lesson to all of you guys. Download and copy over high resolution objects, images, whatever it is, it needs to be high resolution. Do not put in blurry looking stuff in your thumbnails. It just does not look good. Let's move this layer below. I'm gonna make this white again. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna add in the kill object and then we'll add in some text with the number of kills that we got in this game. Let's just say we got 25 kills. If you pulled out that many kills, you want people to know. I also hope you guys are catching on to the trend of having big, large objects in the thumbnail. You don't want super tiny things because they'll be hard to see. And now we just need to add drop shadows to all this. Even our boy Travis Scott, we're adding a drop shadow to you too, bro. Look at that. And now we can brighten up this thumbnail with the background selected. Gonna go to image, adjustments, brightness, some contrast, saturation as well. And this time we're gonna use the blur effect filter. Do a Gaussian blur and set you know a decent level of blur here. Not, you know, just a little bit. There you have a second thumbnail. Two thumbnail examples and one video. To save your new thumbnail, go over to file, scroll down to export as, and I usually like to go with the JPEG option. And in this window, just go ahead and double check your quality settings, then just select save and it'll download to your computer. Let me know in the comment section, do you like thumbnail A? or thumbnail B that we did better. But there you guys have it. If you made it this far in the video, definitely hit it with a big thumbs up. If you guys would like to see this video again, but maybe for some other types of gaming thumbnails, let me know in the comment section below and I can add that to my list of video ideas to do. If you wanna watch some more content from me, check out this video up on screen right now. Appreciate you guys staying to the end and when in doubt, keep it simple and make it pop.